Hello, welcome to Organic Acting. I'm Chris Conway and this is Stanislavski Exercises. So what I'm going to do here is give you a breakdown of Stanislavski. Um, it's not really a biography as such and what I'm going to do is give you the top five, in my opinion, the top five techniques from his system. So Stanislavski was an actor director, theatre practitioner, who in the late 19th century became involved in the theatrical world and became a little bit disillusioned by what was going on. He took a look around him and everything revolved around melodrama. If you were a performer, it was all about showing how well you could act how many emotions you had in your little toolkit, you know? Showing how angry you could be or how tragic you could be. And the audience would sit there and they would applaud and they go, oh, that person's a fantastic actor. And Stanislavski said to himself, there's gotta be a better way, a more effective way of tapping into emotion and tapping into reality actually presenting something to an audience that is that is happening that is organic that's why we call the channel organic acting because that's what we're striving for be sure to stay tuned for tip number one which i would argue is the most important stanislavski and technique so at number five we have emotion memory so emotion memory is something that stanislavski incorporated into his system for an actor to kind of fall back on if he's really struggling to feel what a character is feeling, perhaps um, there's a block somewhere, an actor can use their own experiences in life to reach an emotional peak. So for example, if the actor were playing a character who's just lost a loved one, the actor could recall a time perhaps in their own life when they'd lost someone or lost something important to them. And through doing that, organic emotion is created and that's emotion memory it's kind of like setting off a little firework in your head that can just get you to that moment and get you to that emotional place next one is something called the method of physical action this is something that Stanislavski emphasized later on in his career he said through actually doing through actually physically performing as that character in a physical way taking on their physical attributes you could feel more at one with that character so Stanislavski said that an actor should really explore the physical attributes of a character so their tempo was the first thing did they move slowly did they have a fast tempo uh, did they have any disabilities, something that would affect their walk or their gait. In one of his books, he emphasizes that if, for example, you're a young person and you're playing an old person, you don't play a stereotype. You don't play the stereotype of, oh, I'm old and my back hurts and oh, I can't see very well. That Stereotypes have got no place in Stanislavski and teachings or, or the psycho technique or the system in general. You should always be looking at the given circumstances. If you'd like more information on given circumstances, be sure to check out my other video, Acting Tips for Beginners. At number three, we have the magic if and imagination. Now, obviously, as actors, we know how important imagination is. We've, we've got to have an imagination or how are we going to put ourselves into these imaginary circumstances. But Stanislavski said the word if was magical, that we as actors could say, what if this situation were really happening, how would I, and more importantly, the character respond? So in an actor prepares, Stanislavski puts forward the scenario of a madman approaching the door. And he says to his students, how would you act? How would you or your character respond if a madman had broken out of an asylum somewhere? And was coming up to the door right now and was standing outside of the door. How would you react? What would you do?
Now this is so important because just through this magic if, you are no longer forcing your imagination and that's why the if is so magical. You can say to yourself, okay, I'm not forcing myself to believe this. I'm not forcing my imagination. But if this were happening, how would I respond? How would my character respond? If this were happening, what would it feel like? And then the imagination just starts to work on its own. It's a very, very freeing technique to use. At number two, we have units. So quite a straightforward one this, but a fantastic one to use. Basically, Stanislavski said, rather than trying to deal with an entire text, let's say an entire play, and becoming overwhelmed with that, you should break it down into manageable chunks or units. So the way this works is, at the beginning of every scene is a new unit, the end of every scene is the end of the unit. Whenever a character leaves or enters, that creates a new unit because the action of the piece has been affected by the entrance or exit of that character. Or whenever there's a big dramatic change in the action, that should be a new unit. It helps you to tear the chicken apart. I think that's a metaphor that's used in one of uh, um, Stanislavski's books. Rather than having to consume a whole chicken, sorry for you vegetarians out there, but rather than consuming the whole bird, you break it down, you, you take off the wings, you cut off the meat, and it, so it's in manageable chunks. And that can really help you to get through the text that you're dealing with. And finally, number one, objectives. I've made this as a number one in my previous video, Acting Tips for Beginners. The reason why I've done it again is because it's so important. In Stanislavski and teachings, we do not try to play emotion. That is one of the biggest no-nos. The reason for that is Stanislavski said, you can't play emotion, it's, it's impossible. You can try, sometimes it works, but a lot of the time it doesn't. And if you're trying to be angry, for example, you are just putting across an idea of what angry is, an idea of what that emotion is. You are putting forward a stiff, mechanical, melodramatic version of angry. That's what Stanislavski was trying to get away from, melodrama. So he said that with a clear want or a clear objective, you as an actor can play that. And through either getting what you want, not getting what you want, uh, encountering conflict, that will create the emotion. The emotion will actually happen organically. If you enjoyed this video on Stanislavski exercises, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment below, maybe ask me a question, I will get back to you. Until next time, see ya.